Switzerland is just a haven for unusual railways. For one, because the Swiss like railways, but also because they have the ability to build all kinds of funky ones. From going under mountains to movable pantographs. But the Stoßbahn isn't just regular crazy, it's the steepest railway in the world. So let's talk more about it, and steep railways. Hi there, my name is Reese, and this is a channel where I talk about trains on big hills, or well, mountains. Now the first thing we really need to address, and it actually comes up on Wikipedia, is the Stoßbahn actually even the steepest? Hilariously enough, I've actually taken the other contender for this title, which is a very steep train at Scenic World in the Blue Mountains outside of Sydney. Unfortunately, the train at Scenic World feels more like a roller coaster, which Scenic World also has, albeit not completed. And it doesn't feel like a true train line because it doesn't have switches or multiple trains. It's an elevator, folks. A very scenic elevator. The distinction being made here is that the Stoßbahn is a funicular, meaning that it, like other funiculars, does have multiple independent trains, or in this case carriages, and routes as well as switches. This allows one car to travel down the mountain while another travels up. This obviously boosts service frequency and thus capacity, but it also allows one car's weight to offset the others. Unsurprisingly perhaps, the world's steepest railway is actually the descendant of a previous, albeit less steep, funicular. The original Stoßbahn built in the 1930s was like many funiculars, built to carry passengers and cargo to the ski town at the top of the high plateau, not far from the town of Schwitz, 40 kilometers south of Zurich. Now, this old route, useful as it was, had some issues. Like most funiculars, its accessibility was poor, because boarding the terraced carriages meant a sloped station with a platform that consisted of large stairs. And not only was it old, but it also took a curved route up the hill, avoiding the steepest slopes. So when the time came for upgrades to the old route, restrictive tunnels and the general age of the system meant it would be extremely expensive. Expensive enough to consider if something better could be done. Enter here the super modern, super steep Stoßbahn. The new train would take a more direct route that landed passengers right at the town at the top of the hill, rather than an annoying walk with heavy gear away. But that meant a challenge. Funiculars traditionally cannot vary their grade a lot, because that would mean that the carriages will uncomfortably rotate, throwing people forward or perhaps backwards into the wall. This means that funiculars generally need to climb at a pretty steady angle, so that the rotation of the vehicles won't be too significant and the ride will be comfortable. But this creates a big problem if you want to climb a super steep hill and then do a much more shallow traversal to the hill at the top. The solution to these problems is novel, but also just super intuitive. Have the passenger cabins rotate. I should also note that there is also a freight platform at the front of each car which also rotates like the passenger cabins, allowing large items being shipped up to the town as well as supplies and people's heavy gear to be separately stored from them, which is honestly just way more dignified than, say, keeping your gigantic backpack on your lap as you go up in a bus. Now, it turns out the fundamental technology for rotating passenger cabins on some sort of transportation mode is pretty well figured out thanks to an old friend Ferris wheels, whose cabins, at least in modern large Ferris wheels like say the London Eye, do something very similar. This way, the funicular car can happily roll along slopes of varying levels of steepness, all while passengers are comfortably level. Even better though, this means that the actual platforms at the end stations of the line can be perfectly flat, large, open spaces, allowing people to easily, comfortably, and most importantly, accessibly board the vehicles. Now, there is one more element that makes the Stoßbahn at least a little bit unique among funiculars, and that's the fact that it actually doesn't just have a single uphill cable, but also a downhill cable. Now, this second cable is necessary because, as I mentioned before, the vehicles do travel along some relatively flat, and in the cases of the stations, very flat, as in completely flat, sections of track. And so having a second downhill cable allows you to keep the vehicles moving even when there isn't tension on the top rope. You can think of this essentially as turning the two vehicles and the ropes into a gigantic loop. Of course, this does mean that when traveling along very flat parts of the route, there is sometimes additional energy loss and energy needed to be put into the rope to actually move the vehicles. But all in all, it is a remarkable solution for getting people and their stuff up to the top of a mountain. But that brings up the obvious question in all of this. Does your city or local mountain need a funicular? Perhaps the most natural question to ask is why not a less expensive cable car? 
After all, urban cable cars and gondolas have become all the rage in recent decades, and often filling a niche, climbing up hills, that funiculars traditionally would have. Fortunately enough, for the funiculars and for people who like rail vehicles for no particular reason, they still do have some key benefits over gondolas. For one, funiculars can be underground, which, okay, is conceivable and I believe does exist in some places for chairlifts and gondolas, but in tiny sections and it doesn't make sense in an urban area. What's funny enough is that, in fact, one of the oldest underground urban railways in the world is a funicular, the tunnel in Istanbul, which I talked about in my Istanbul Metro Explained video. Ultimately, for dense, hilly urban centers, places like Istanbul, but also Montreal or San Francisco or Rio, having an underground vehicle that can comfortably travel a very steep slope through a dense urban area where you might not have room for an above-ground gondola, where NIMBYs might be a serious issue, is a really good thing. That being said, if the desire to tunnel isn't there, funiculars can start to be a bit more complex, at least in terms of interfacing with the neighbors. That's because ultimately funiculars are rail vehicles, and like other rail systems, you need a long linear right-of-way for them to operate on. Whereas with gondolas, you can have sparsely placed poles that support the cables. With a funicular, you're building a railway. It could be built above ground, but it's still a railway meaning that there's probably going to be at least some linear impact along its route. There are other benefits to funiculars though. Those who like trains are probably going to like them more than gondolas, which is a terrible reason to choose one, but they are also not going to be hanging at height, which will mean that they're more comfortable, there won't be a lot of swinging, they're better for people who have a fear of heights, and probably most importantly, they're less susceptible to being shut down because of a major weather event, like a huge windstorm. Ultimately though, I think the novelty and uniqueness of funiculars is just sort of a byproduct of their historic inflexibility. But with technology such as that used on the Stospawn advancing and making this type of transportation mode much more flexible but also accessible, it might actually be time for a lot of cities to give the funicular another look. So thanks for watching. A big thank you to Livio for his footage and knowledge shared for this video.